Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining on. Um, I tend to do this on all the events. Tell me which part of the world you're in from. I think we all would love to know that. It's, it's We've got over, almost 2,000 people coming in for this event. It's crazy. It's a massive event. And um, crazy. I think it's going to be it's, it's gonna be 100% worthwhile all your time. So um, just very quickly, after this event, we've got Eric coming in as well on a separate Zoom chat. So please stick around for that one. I'll send you the Zoom, uh, Zoom link. We'll be sending you the Zoom link in the chat. For some reason, it had to be two separate uh, links. So please check that one out. That is going to be ridiculous. If you've come across Eric before, you know what he knows with respect to AI and Outbound. But before we go into that, we all care about email deliverability. We all care about what Google has to say. We all care about Outbound messaging. And I can tell you for a fact, the only person on the internet who intimidates me with deliverability is this man on the screen, which is Jesse. Jesse, uh, let us kick hey off man. with you. Let us know who you are and just, just get into it, mate. Right? Yeah, definitely. So Jesse Willett, founder of Lead Magic, uh, wanted to... Really go through today, just the setup, right? This is the kickoff part of it. Uh, we've got a lot of different ways to get your inboxes set up and, and do that. But I, I don't share a lot of this on LinkedIn. I like to keep it a little bit private as to like where we're, you know, using our, uh, you know, where we send our emails from. You can't tell everybody where all your secrets. But uh, so I'll just show you out today what we're trying to learn today a little bit is just around how do we get back to the primary and really stay there because. There's things you can do today that are going to really impact. And I think a lot of it comes around, how are you going to automate that infrastructure so it can actually be monitored? You know, you have to treat it like your DevOps team really treats their, their system. And I'm going to do about 20 minutes just to show you sort of how we do it. Uh, I'm just going to show you the internal system that we use uh, as well, just so you can kind of understand. So everything is based on API and webhooks. And we're going to show you right now how we're able to take a lot of our, whenever we want to set up like a new campaign, we'll always use like a new group of domains, of course, because everybody knows you're, you, you should never use your primary domain to send cold emails, right? They're unsolicited, they hurt your uh, reputation and all of that. So if we go through this today, what we're going to learn about is- Jesse, just, just one second before ahead. I interrupt you. I'm super, super sorry for that. Everyone, you will definitely have questions. If you do drop it in the chat, the team is reviewing every question. We're collecting it and we will get it answered by Jesse himself when we have Q&A after this. So please make sure you fill the chat with your question in there. So we have that answered for you as when possible. Um, but Jesse, sorry, thank you. Please carry on. Yep, no problem. And really just, we're going to go through this really quick just to show how to do it. But this is something that a lot of companies will take hours and days to do. And we've just really made our process. We've really built around Smart Lead. We've really built it around Clay uh, for, for messaging and, and everything there. So, so what we're doing right now is there's really four key steps that you're going to have to deal with when you're setting up your, your lead generation program. Now, if you're at a SaaS company, a lot of your a lot of it's going to be from a uh, from your own company and your, your IT team might help you here. But if you can really optimize this, this has really been the difference maker for us in the scale of taking full advantage of Smartly to be agile. You know, we're, we're never going to be worried about a different um, one of the the new rules or regulations just because we're not spamming people, right? We're not sending an enormous amount of emails out of one domain name or, right, we're, we're sort of moving them around in the right, the right ways for clients or people. So we know that they're going to land. So we're, and we're monitoring them, right? So we don't spam. In fact, we won't run campaigns that are spam, right? Like we just we just care too much about it. So like that's just something that I think a lot of people miss. Uh, in terms of the four sort of key steps that you have to think about, and I'll just tell you what we're doing, so you don't have to guess. But you have to register the domains. That's always a project for some people, but uh, you could there's some cool prompts you can do to to kind of take care of that. The DNS setup becomes a problem. Now there's only one step you can't automate. The rest of it can be completely automated, even purchasing the domains. So that's something else we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and the one step you can't, it's really more of a terms and services can, uh, you can't really, the one step is DKIM, right? So that's the one step that you can't, you're not supposed to be automating because it's a violation of the terms and services of Google and Microsoft. So that's just the one step that you can't, but, and then the inbox setup. So you could set up the inboxes for your team or the people that you're, running the campaigns for, and then the sequencer, right? So those are like the four. And we've tried every single domain registrar. We've tried everything, really. And we've kind of narrowed our way in. I would say for registering domains, we're using DN, DN Simple or we're using uh, Namecheap. 
uh, we've been pretty happy with both of them. The reason that we use those two is we've actually found that their APIs are pretty good for, uh, for, for actually registering and buying, right? GoDaddy, you can use the APIs uh, to buy the domains, but you have to deposit. Like there's just a weird, the depositing process is really odd. So we don't use that one. And then Cloudflare does something a little sneaky uh, with the domains. They sort of make it so you can't really transfer them out. So that's something that we don't really, uh, I think they have ways around it, but, and they don't let you buy the domain. So we'll use those other two registrars. And then what we'll do is we'll actually set up the DNS records on Cloudflare because we find it to be the most flexible. I think DN Simple is pretty good for that too, but I think Cloudflare is just a little bit better for us. Now, we also set up the inboxes automatically. You're allowed to do this. So you're allowed to go in, get an admin. Uh, we, have a, we actually have a plugin for Google Sheets. That if you want to do this, it's free right now. If you want to try it out, it's in the App Store in the uh, Google Marketplace. And you could set up you know, inboxes. And it's been approved by Google. So that's something that uh, you know, your IT team will look at. But a lot of the times, it's not going to be like a traditional IT team. A lot of times, it's like a lead generation agency or somebody like that. So, and then of course the sequencer. And what we'll do is we'll just dive into this really quickly. So, inside our platform, what we're doing, and this is our uh, was our internal tool, and then we just opened it up like a SaaS product. Really, is what we did. So, what we do to do it first, we we would we'd go in and we actually enter in a domain. The domain is sort of like beast mode to figure out what domains are available. We usually just register.com domains and that works the best for us. Then we have Cloudflare. Now Cloudflare is nice because all the APIs are documented. So if you want to see what sort of the APIs look like, uh, you can go in, you can edit it. We've kind of made that there. We're, we're not charging for this right now. If you want to, if you do want to set up DNS records, we've had, we have it all available. So we'll give that out uh, if anybody wants to do that. Also, we have a Google plugin that does it as well. So you can go in, we have all of the records sort of automated because there's about 22, 23 steps. And it's just something that is just such a painful process. And I think hiring VAs is, is probably better for other. This is a painful process that you just don't want to go through more than once. Every time you go through it, you're like, is there a way to just automate this? And there, there it really is. Uh, and then the other thing we do is we'll use Google's APIs. They have, uh, they've, they've given you access essentially to all of their APIs and also Microsoft has as well. So you can just go into the platform and do it. Now, the step-by-step -step process, we also document, we're going to put on our, our site later today, but it's really just a bunch of API calls. And you just, I mean, you could read what it, they do, but you're better off just copying it and doing it really. And, and it's, it's something that if you set it up the same way, we found that that consistency really changes the game. And I think you know, I go in and I look at other like lead generation agencies and I see other SaaS companies and they just never, they never set up their domains the same way. They just, they sort of space out and then they forget records, they forget their DMARC record. And those types of things can really hold you back, especially with the new authentication rules coming if you're not doing that. And then we also added it for Microsoft as well to be able to change your DNS records there. And of course, everybody needs it, the forwarding. So Cloudflare has a really nice forwarding and you can also put a UTM parameter on it so you can track that forwarding uh, ongoing. So that's really, from all perspective, that's really how you can sort of do that. Now you're ready to set up the campaigns and that process could take somebody, I mean, I've, I've helped companies out and they, you know it took their team several hours to set that up, right? So if you can save that, and scale against that. That's one of the things I've seen between top sort of lead generation agencies and things like that. So we're going to give away a guide on this. We've broken down the steps for every uh, provider and every DNS uh, register. So we'll we'll do that. We also have it built into our platform. But this is something that we just really take serious. And I think this is where I've talked to uh, Vaba a lot about just how to really nail this process because. If you use the same records and you do that over and over, you're going to get a lot of excellent results. The other area that I would say that's really important right now is this, this is disconnect monitoring. So if you're doing any email right now, you're seeing that your emails are getting disconnected more, uh, especially if you're using tools like Smart Lead or Instantly, which are favorable for delivery, but sometimes Google will sort of target them a little bit more because they're using OAuth 1 which is like a, a little bit of a different security model. 
So this is something that we do a lot is this monitoring and, and really watching the inboxes because if you know what campaigns are shutting off inboxes, and when I say shut it off, it's like, you know, if you've heard of your like sales development team, maybe uh, have to go to IT and get their account. Uh, and if you're running a lot of campaigns, you'll see more of this, right? That's that's what we see. So just because we run a lot of campaigns for, for clients and whatnot uh, and ourselves. But these are the things that we do that are just far, I just find them to be, uh, you know, when I talk to agencies or I talk to companies, I'm always like, astonished because they just, a lot of the times they don't have a process. And then when I look, you know, even at a few of their domain names, it's it's pretty clear they don't. And I mean, if you build all this great messaging and clay and tool and awesome tools like clay and AI, and then you just don't get this right, like it just really, it's, it's really kind of pathetic. Uh, you know, so that, that's something that I think is uh, out there right now. And then of course, it always comes down to really, really good copy and being a, being very relevant. So we do have a, a way to push into Smart Lead. And then we also are adding one for pushing into clay as well, because clay just makes it so much easier. You know, you could set up your own template that you're going to use for different clients. And I think if you're a lead generation company, this is really the time you got to reinvent yourself. If you're, if you're doing the per meetings and you're doing, you're charging a performance basis, it's a really slippery slope that you're going to be running into. I think really where you want to be is helping companies craft their message with tools like Clay. I mean, if you look at what Eric's doing with it, uh, some of the other folks at Clay, it's it's pretty impressive. But I think what we could do is stop there. I'm sure there's a lot of questions on that. And uh, you know, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them just about our process and why we do it a certain way. Uh, but I'd love to hear uh, any questions you have. I can uh, jump in. I think uh, one of the obvious questions that people are going to have, Jesse, is where exactly are you actually buying your domains from? Hey, Fessy, let's let's go back with that. Does the source of where you're buying domains, you, you mentioned Cloudflare versus GoDaddy or, or whatever, does that A, matter, right? And then B, if you are buying them, what is your diversification system with respect to different ESPs that you're using? Yeah, so on the domain front, we actually, uh, we, we don't see a huge difference. Now, I, I've, there's a lot of people like, oh, I use Namecheap, I shouldn't have. We have not seen a major one. We did at one point see it on one of these. There was a domain provider that was selling like a, they were taking a hit on the domain where they were selling like the domains for a dollar, dot coms, right? So they lose the seven bucks or whatever they have to pay the registrar. And they were taking that hit to try to get the person to convert. Now, of course, that attracted a lot of cold email <laughs> folks. So that one actually did hurt, but they've kind of changed a little bit too. I think personally, I, I mean, if you had to say like, I think DN Simple probably has the best APIs. It's a little bit pricier than Namecheap. Uh, the Namecheap API is not is not great. It's not documented well, but being able to buy domains programmatically and GoDaddy is obviously does it as well. But it's they have a hard. It's hard to get the money. They they make you go through like a mm. wire transfer to get the money into GoDaddy, so you can buy these domains. And I have no idea why they're that strange about it, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Probably because these domains are like pretty much permanent. Once they buy them, they can't really. You know, return them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, they're a big enough company. They could probably float it, but you know, it's one of those things that I think name cheap, go daddy, DN simple. Uh, I would probably avoid Cloudflare for register, but not for, not for name servers. And this is something that I think uh, this really sets up the infrastructure to build all this great messaging and API, AI messaging. Uh, if you get this right, you could probably have pretty bad messaging and it'll still work. That's what really is uh, sort of scary. I've, we've tested stuff like that and just, you know, we'll, we'll write really good copy for this one campaign and then we'll try we'll, just for our own internal stuff and just see what happens. And we found that if we got deliverability right, it didn't even matter. I mean, a lot of the times it doesn't even matter, right? Yep. No, fair enough. Uh, what are your thoughts on people saying, uh, we've seen this happen, right? The second you buy from Namecheap, uh, you're directly blacklisted. Um, do you know it, it, why? It's fine after seven days. It, so a lot of those spam, a lot of the blacklist are, there's, there's always like a little weird, something a little weird on all those blacklists. Like you're not going to, like if you started a domain on Namecheap or one of the providers that they, they always show up on the blacklist early, you know, in two weeks, it'll probably be off. And really you can't, 
you're not gonna, you know, there's two ways they're gonna block your, uh, you, you sort of, your, you know, you're sending, a, like, break it down. You're sending unsolicited emails. And I know there's a lot of people on like LinkedIn, they're like, well, you're sending, like, you've got to anticipate a level of complaints, right? You don't want to be doing breakup emails and guilt emails as much as you can avoid that. But mm. you've got to assume that risk. And that's why I was pretty adamant about not running it on your primary domain because yep. these emails get complaints and they're way over the spam rate, which I know Google has gone back on, but uh, it still looks, I mean, they're still going to lock out accounts and that's why you got to be prepared for it. But I just don't think the uh, the two ways that they block it, I mean, the domain and the IP, they're not blocking the IP because Google, everybody has the same IP really. Fair enough. And then the domain name is really where your reputation is. And that, once that gets crushed, you got to probably kind of take it back to warm up mode or get a new domain. Okay. Uh, I want to drop in two questions, people. Uh, yeah. you, you spoke about... Um, Paper, paper, uh, paper booking, etc., being a slippery slope. Uh, why was that? What do you think that's the reason? And what's the alternative solution? Um, yeah, I mean, that? when you're when you're working with a client, right? They're trying to mitigate. You're both trying to mitigate your risk, right? So, you know, if you're running a business, the best businesses are the ones that can predict their re- their predict their revenue, right? So, if you're if you're running a performance now, you do lower the friction coming into it, of course, right? People are much more. But sometimes you're you're gonna attract clients who are just really now. I'm not saying it's it can't be a split either, right? Like, you know, when I, you know, we're most salespeople are on a 50-50 plan. But remember, if you're if you have employees and you have you know software and data and all this other stuff, and then you gamble like that, like that, you probably don't want to do it in that case. And you probably want to look. It's probably just as easy to find another client who will. A lot of the times, the more the clients who spend more money with you. Uh, complain less, right? So yep. I, I think that's a slippery slope. Obviously, you're trying to optimize for. Uh, I would I would read the uh, transparency sale by uh, uh, by Todd. Um, his last name's Capone. You know, just in terms of like what you're what you're, uh, you're what you're negotiating on on the levers, right? If they say, well, we don't want to pay you all the cash up front, then you know, I mean, if you're only talking month to month and it's like a performance, like probably you're gonna, if you're using all the tools that we're talking about today, like you're probably in a little bit of a higher caliber, probably don't need that client. You probably tell them to go, go away. I mean, as an agency, you got to select your clients really, really. Yep. Uh, no, smart. that's absolutely fair. Um, I want to drop into another question. People spoke about the, um, the Google sheets inbox automation to the yep. app, obviously that you have, uh, is that a web extension? Is that an application? How can people access yeah, that? Yeah. Great question. It's uh it's a marketplace app and it actually, we built uh, the same, uh, we built the same integration that our uh, regular. So we took our internal app and we just put it out to for people to use. Uh, the monetizations on sort of the data verification stuff and pushing it into like Smart Lead and well, we're not charging for that, but like pushing it into Smart Lead and then soon to be Clay. Uh, but what we're doing is uh, you could just go into the marketplace. It's the Google Sheets marketplace and it's called the Email Operating System. Now. Google gave us the uh, the thumbs up on the admin SDK, which is their sort of uh, their their kind of like granting. We don't have to like go in like you know like a weird Chrome extension. You got to download it and like do all that. Like it's a real app that you can actually you can use and you can actually it's pretty nice because you can put it across multiple uh, workspaces. So that okay. kind of helps you a little bit. Okay. Um, I want to jump a bit into email infrastructure as a question, right? Yeah. What's your current setup? How many mailboxes? Uh, so let's just take Google as an example. How many domains per workspace? How many mailbox per domain? How many messages uh, do you send out? What's your warm up structure like? Um, can you dive into that? Because I think with the whole, yeah. even though we know that it's demystified with Google now, and we'll jump into that very quickly. What's the, the recommended approach you've seen to keep it safe for us uh, yeah. when we're sending and for clients? The biggest thing I would say is like, what you really have to look at, you have to just assume like one day you're going to wake up and everything fails. And, and if you were on, Zo- you were using Zoho like nine months ago, you you actually did have that happen. So, so you yep. probably know what I mean, right? Uh, what you got to kind of do is you got to kind of have this system where, hey, these clients, and this is, by the way, this is how all the ESPs do it, right? So if you're SendGrid, they look at, hey, are you an e-commerce brand? Are you a SaaS company? SaaS companies tend to have a little bit of a higher spam rate. So they're, they kind of put people where they think they should be. And what you need to do is you need to build your organizations out. Now, what you want to do is if you have a really high paying customer, if you lost a few inboxes because of somebody else, uh, 
mm-hmm. or something like that, or, you, you know, you, the org went down or, right. It's all about this sort of decentralization. I mean, the, I think the answer is more is always better, but in, in, in reality, you know, you just got to be careful on putting, uh, you know, you probably want to work with clients on a basis where you're either putting two or three clients, no more than that on a workspace. And maybe some people disagree with that, but you could easily okay. disagree with it. But, um, okay. But if you want to go with like a very vanilla setup, right? Let's just put the client yeah. aside. If I'm doing it just for myself, how many workspaces, uh, let's just to say, I, I want to reach out my time's large on a reach out uh, uh, to a hundred thousand people. Um, in a month, right? A unique yep. leaves a hundred thousand people in a month. Um, arbitrarily, how many uh, domain? I would do you set think? it up on Office right now. Probably, okay. I think Google Automation is a little easier, but uh, probably Office would be good right now because the I would probably stay away from that a little bit because it's going to get okay. weird. But I would do probably five or ten domain names, and I would set up two inboxes, and I would only send. I would cap them both at fifty per day because you got to anticipate. You know, you're going to get the warm ups. Those are going to come back and give you credits or like sort of like engagement points. But then you're going to lose it back when you start sending uh, emails again, right? Because remember, all cold emails are really unsolicited. So you just Makes have sense. to sort of play that game and Makes you're sense. not going to have a feedback loop. They're not going to tell you who hits complaint. They're going to give you a spam rate and that's what you're going to get out of it. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, someone's asked a good question. Any recommendations on getting into large corporate inboxes, people with a thousand plus employees, yep. what's the angle you take? Yeah. So, uh, we, we actually had a client we had to do this for now. It's tough when you get them through and then the message didn't hit, doesn't hit. Uh, that is, that is, that's the tough part about it. Uh, we, we, we actually were really successful in terms of deliverability. We got just like 15, I don't know. It was like 15% replies, but they were just in the wrong direction. Right. And they were trending that way. And they said, wow, because they were using, I think they're using like sales loft or one of the, one of the tools mm-hmm. that kind of has it on the primary. Mm-hmm. But the answer is you probably, what we do is we'll scan all of the DNS records. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, you could just use like the Google a client probably has a way to, you could just use uh, dns.google.com and you could find out which inboxes they use. So if it doesn't say Gmail, it's probably, It'll say it'll say office, but it'll there's also like proof point and a lot of those. Most of those are probably on the office. If it's the bigger companies, uh, I hate to do this like rule of thumb thing, but like generally speaking, you're probably going to be more on Microsoft Exchange. I agree. To office 365, yeah. right? That's the transition they took. Yeah, and and for some reason, as we all know, uh, you know, thirty five emails a day. Per box. Okay, thirty five mil. Do. Okay, thirty five. So yeah. So if you drop down program. the sender and you you start slower, and what you want to do is kind of don't go crazy. Don't, don't send the, uh, like the first week, maybe only set up like two or three and just see how the message is getting received. Are people replying? Like, is it, is it coherent? Like, you know, you got to get that feeling first. So then you're like, okay, we're getting the replies. They're not great yet. Like we haven't seen what we wanted to see yet. Mm-hmm. But remember 5% reply and you're looking for 10 to 20% and optimize that for positive replies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So that's Perfect. what I would say. Makes sense. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, I'm going to pick an interesting question from Julian. Um, what site do you use or recommend to keep track of all your domain reputation, MX toolbox stuff, mail monitor, what, uh, Glock apps? What's your What's your tool for um, <laughs> ensuring you're healthy? Uh, so I think the best one out there is the delivery center, but you can't really use it for cold email. Uh, okay. and if anybody knows what Glock apps just did, I, I hate to I'll be careful here. I don't want to get in trouble, but like, I kind of want to act <laughs> on if anybody remember, uh, just cause they, they switched their model, like kind of in the middle of a month to their, to a consumption or they did something with consumption model and basically everybody's price went up 10 X. So you have to look at your Glock apps bill. You know, if you got it locked in Glock apps is pretty, pretty reasonable. It monitors it. I think another thing that's missed is one thing we do in smart lead is we actually have a button that in our app and it's, it's available. It actually works. You can um, you could basically send uh, to our webhook, and you could test all your inboxes. So we run a seven hundred, you know, like on one environment we have that we'll run seven hundred fifty domains, and we'll just send uh, to that webhook, and that webhook is on SES, and then we have another webhook that's on SendGrid, and we just see if either one of them either don't authenticate the DCAM, DMARC, or SPF, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and if if any of them fail, we automatically go and fix that inbox, and we do that every week. So like we Makes never sense. deal with like a bad inbox, like on, you know, like we take a lot of pride in that and you could set up a campaign and do that uh, to, with, you know, if you want to do it in our uh, our portal that we're giving. We're giving system, yeah, fair enough. Um, I want to drive into a question that someone just asked yeah. Be, uh, and we, let's break it down in two ways, right? So first question is, 
hey, um, uh, any other platform other than LinkedIn to go ahead and get access to private emails? That's question one. And question two, I'd like you to answer why we shouldn't be sending uh, emails to private emails based upon the entire Google conversation we've just had. Now, are we talking? Are we talking personal emails? Yeah, personal emails. Yeah, personal emails. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you want to, so like obviously Gmail is going to be cracking down on people who are sending. Uh, they they really kind of it was weird because like this this looked like a B two B thing, but then it like kind of pivoted towards a B two C like stay away from our free Gmail. It was like it was like a little bit of a bizarre move, but yeah. uh, you know if you're looking at personal. Uh, you know, we do have uh, some capabilities for, for in our enrichment, but there's also some good ones in Clay that, you know, we've used that we felt had even, you know, similar coverage. Mm. I think personal emails, you want to be careful with your, you want to look at the laws in your country. So if you're storing the data and you're doing that, you're going to probably be in a GDPR and a CCPA. So you want to be very careful. Personal emails aren't really great for B2B. So I would sort of focus a little bit differently there. And if that's probably another world you want to look at, um, might be better for something else. Okay. So with that, can we, uh, let's use this platform as the first conversation that's been really, yeah, is going to be had yeah. in, in a large public setting. Uh, what was the Google issue that obviously went viral last, uh, last week, or last mm -hmm. two weeks ago. And then what was the redaction that happened Yeah, and what should people do going into 2024? This is December. This is going to be the last large event we're going to have on cold emails before we go into the new year. So what should people be doing? Um, so yeah, I think, I think, look, Google is pretty serious about, they want to be under, and, and we've seen it on pickup. We've seen orgs get banned already. We, we, we've talked to two orgs that have gotten, they've gotten banned. They had about a hundred, probably a hundred sales development reps each. And they had it, right? Like they had probably, you know, if you get five or 10 of these SDRs that get suspended in one day, and if you started to email like the top, like a couple, like I think one of them was emailing like Honeywell, which is like a well-known Google uh, customer. And they hit like 20 people over there and probably got 20 complaints. If you do that, Google will block your org. I mean, I'm sure they will, right? Now it looks like they backtracked on this whole, like we're going to block your org thing. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm, I mean, there was probably a couple of uh, calls over there. I mean, it's loving. Sort of, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they basically didn't, they kind of took the teeth out of the, like they basically came out really, really strong and puffed really hard on it. Like puffed their chest out a lot. And then they just sort of backed off. Now you just never really know, right? You never know who's actually writing that copy over there. They don't really say anything about it. Uh, the funny thing is, is nobody really knows how your email, everybody is like, oh, I can fix your deliverability. They don't really know how your email deliverability is until they actually, uh, in, unless you're the person on the other end getting the message. The only person who knows if your email got delivered is the person on the other end. None of the tools know, right? You have to be in that person's inbox or part of their IT team to like go into their inbox to know how the deliverability is. So like, you don't know. The only thing you can really rely on is the replies. Right. So that's where Makes a lot sense. of people this. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, you know, since you raised that question, everyone's looking for a parameter to work with, right? Or um, a barometer to work with. You said at least 5% reply rate is something to aim for and open rates a certain percentage. Now, I want to drip into that question very quickly. A, I know I'm putting in the spot. I hate when someone asks me this, but might as well ask you this. Um, what should be a response rate I should be categorically aiming for in the B2B space when I'm trying to go ahead and generate meetings? So Eric uses open rates. I don't. He uses it to flex because he thinks, you know, he knows he has. I saw him in a bus his job submit here. But, but I, you know, and I like his move, actually, because it does give you a sense of comfort. But the thing about open rates, are you don't know. We'll go open and then we'll go reply and positive reply. So open rates, you don't know, right? Like it's, if you email more ITP Apple users, you're going to get a higher open rate. Does that mean they read it? Nope. It could have been the proxy relay in Louisiana. <laughs> so if all of your people are in Louisiana and they're the proxy relay, that could be what you're, you just like, if everyone's like, oh, I want to get a higher open rate. I'll just send it to everybody who has an iPhone. Yep. <laughs> right. Fair there enough. you go. I just beat the game. Right. So, yeah. so then the next, the next move really is, uh, you know, reply rate, which is really the indicator, right? I think you want to carve out all of the like out of office, not, you know, you want to look at like not interested, how severe they are, like the spectrum of that. And you want to look for a solid 5%. If you're under 5%, there's something wrong, right? Like you're deliver. It's probably your deliverability or you're just not asking like a, like I, I get a lot of these emails. They're just not asking, like, they're not asking for anything. 
right? Mm-hmm. They're not like, or they're not giving you it. You know, there's nothing they're doing. They're just like, uh, you know, and I'm, it could be really anybody, but it's like, I just don't, some of them I'm like, what, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, even if I was interested, like, what would I do to respond to you? You're, you're, you're making it awkward here. Like, ask me a direct question, or, you know, and I think that reply rate will go up if you do that. Uh, I think getting that response is key. But if you're just bumping the email, that's another thing we see really is uh, you really got to try to add some value to these messages every every single time you send another message because yep. the equity is just coming out of your your company, right? Every Even if I was like thinking about responding, now I'm going to go not respond because you've sent me three emails, right? So you got to really think about the equity. So, here, you know, so tell me that. So what's the fine balance between persistence and annoyance? So what I think every annoyance? message should have a, but you know, you should, have, you should be relevant to the problem. Now, I, I know there's some people too, even people that are maybe even doing the webinar stuff, but I'm not a fan of the like cute, like personalization stuff. Like let's just talk like, or let's just, let's just be relevant to the problem. Right. You know, if you're, if you're a marketing agency and you want to go sell your web design services or whatever it is, go on, find out my lighthouse scores, go find my, how many ads I'm getting and tell me how, how bad it's going to be if I don't fix these problems. Right. Like do something like that versus like, Hey man, I was at your favorite restaurant last week. Cause I have a zip code of, you know, I scraped Google maps and I know every single restaurant that has a high rating in your neighborhood. Like when they do that, they lose all credibility in my book and executive with executives. You want to go after the problem. So if you don't really know what that is yet, you're going to really have to do some testing. I think okay. that's where you want to go. Relevance. Okay. So, so when we, oh, so a, a great way, so if we were to blend that in with Clay would be to go ahead and drop in the, their website and then use something like the ClayGent uh, as yep. well as the GBP yep. integration, then work out the common problems that domain or that website is facing. I think that'd be like a beautiful way to figure out a relevant business. Yeah, so run their, run their Lighthouse, like run Lighthouse over their website or something like that and and tell them, like say, hey, you know, I noticed you guys are moving moving around a lot here and you're, you've updated. Sure. Maybe monitor their site for site changes. You could use... um. You know, site changes, you could do that and you could just monitor the site and say, hey, I saw you guys were changing the site. It looks like it's running a little slow on mobile or it's not responsive or you forgot your schema, meta schema, you know, your, your, your schema SEO. Sure, understood. understood. Like that stuff really helps if you could do that and highlight it. They'll probably thank you, number one. I mean, you know, I've also seen some people that come at you a little too hard. And I think you can also really rock uh, the wrong, you, you know, I've had some people come at me and they're like, Hey, I found this problem. You're a real idiot. You know, it's like, okay, well, do I really want to deal with like, you know, I'll fix the problem and then I'll go find another vendor to to help me. But that's another thing you got to kind of, you know, you got to be gentle a little bit. But like, yeah, I I know that uh, someone comes in straight offended. Oh, like, hey, like, your website on, shit. Man. I'm like, this is not how this works. Like, I get it, but yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, a human. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, Mister, we say something. Yeah, yeah. No, the EQ is key. Um, but I was gonna say, yeah. Jesse, when clients come to you, because I think a lot yep. of people on here are probably like, all right, how do I apply this to my business? What's the framework you use? Like they have a de- deliverability issue. It's probably more fundamentally yep. an issue of their content, their offer. Like, what do you go through with them that people on this call can do right after this call, just like for themselves as an exercise? Yeah. So there's a um I'll I'll even uh drop it in the chat, but there's a we have a sort of an air table that or well like uh you could just email it lead magic at email dot I'll, I'll i'll put it on there and we'll tell you we'll give you back like what's what's wrong on the authentication now if you have any of those wrong that's just like go get it fixed today like you should get 100 percent on that then i think what you have to do is you have to figure out how many unsolicited emails you're sending because unsolicited emails get complaints so if you're sending more than you know 100 from one domain name and you don't have you're not like a bigger company that can can really handle that, like you're probably in trouble. So that's like the next thing you want to look at. So the first one is just all the authentication things. Those just need to be solved. Like don't, if your IT team fights you on that, like look for a new IT team, right? Like that's what I'd say, but (laughs) sorry. But uh, you know, the second thing is that obviously like, are you sending more than a hundred unsolicited emails from your, your, your domain, right? And if you are, then you're probably going to have to go move that a certain part of that workload to another domain name because you're going to get too many complaints and you'll always be in spam. And then I think it's about the content. After that, it's the content, right? That's the next thing. People are sending too many still. That, that That's really what I'm noticing because Google is just, Microsoft and Google, they're just not, like if you, if you go into a day and you get five, seven, eight, 10 complaints on one sequence and you're not spacing those out right, they got you. Like the, the pattern is so friggin' obvious. <laughs> yeah. You know? 
and, and, and on that note of like consistent messing sorry Mishti, did you, did you have anything else to add on uh to that no, 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 i think that's great and it's also a list building problem at that point right like if you're saying yeah, it's all list building after that and the audience yeah. and relevance yep yeah yeah but go but ahead. that's where clay really comes in very you know having that process with your clients to really understand their business and I would say like the negative consequences, like if they can't illustrate that like product market fit, just be prepared for a battle. And that's where those performance agencies like sort of give away too much, I think, is if the company clearly does not have product market fit and there's just no real need for that product, they're just looking for meetings. Those are the companies that really got to stay away from. We've taken some on and, you know, usually we turn them, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, yeah. they paid us for the service. Noted. So. Noted. Um, the chat's filling up with a ton of really high value questions, Jesse. Yeah. I know we're running on time, so I'm Go gonna drop in a few few questions over here. Um, uh, Jesse, you mentioned uh, you you were actually the originator of the ESP feature that we rolled out at SmartLead, right? Um, yeah. But the question Adam had was a great one: is like if we're actually blending Gmail and Outlook together, do you actually recommend actually recommend doing Outlook to Outlook and Gmail to Gmail? Do you see any statistical difference at scale? You do, but there's another problem that depending on who you're emailing. Uh, so, and you gotta be, there's another level of doing this. And I, I don't know if everybody's, this might be a little more, but like what happens is, is your, uh, if somebody's on, so like there's Office and there's Google, but there's a lot of companies that are on Office that are on like Proofpoint, Mimecat, and there's they're on Google as well. So they're on those. And a lot of people have a hard time figuring out, are they on Google or are they on Microsoft? So then sometimes that whole game gets kind of blasted. Now, there are ways to figure out if they are on Google or Microsoft, right? And I'll leave it there. But that that is a strategy that you can do. We are doing that. Uh, that's something that, you know, I won't share that right now. But like, you know, if you message me, I might be able to talk through that with you. But there are ways to do that, to figure that out. Because Proofpoint and Mimecast and all those other ones that you see, those that's a completely different. That could be on Google or Microsoft. So you got to figure that out. If you can figure that out, then it probably works again. But I think people are going to ultimately like feed into their own machine learning models, right? Like which what's going to come out as spam. Makes sense. Hopefully that makes Oops. sense. No, no, no. That that makes sense. Um, I, I want to roll back in very quickly. As uh, someone spoke about, uh, has the world changed then from doing six to seven follow up messages to something shorter in the two three span? It's it's a constant front and back battle where people speak about persistence versus relevance, right? I'm um, not to harp on the same process because it we've seen people do seven follow ups, we've seen people do two follow ups. What is quantified? I just ran a campaign for somebody who is a mm -hmm. well known, very well liked person, mm -hmm. and they went to a fifth message, and every one of the domains was getting disconnected every single day. Makes sense. And this person is very well liked, very smart. <laughs> and, and if I said his name, you would you would definitely be like, wow. But they got their entire every domain they had got, was was starting to get uh, that. So that fifth email can really screw it up. Uh, okay. We found the fourth isn't as bad depending on how well you trend. You know, sometimes you don't have anything great to say on your second and third. It's sort of like pull in a little bit there. I like mm -hmm. to lead a little bit with emotional, and then you kind of cap it off with something very rational that'll impact their business. Sort of like the way that you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sort of like uh, people make decisions emotionally first, frustrated, annoyed, and yeah. then now yeah. I want to save my business. I mean, if you read anything with Jacko or any of the other sort of great sales trainers, they'll tell talk through this. I love him. It gets you tough and tough and going with Jacko. Yeah. Um, uh, you you spoke about product market Jacko fit Bandit. with your clients, and uh, you spoke about ensuring that we uh, we figure out we pull in clients and customers that actually have a product to sell. Uh, do you have one or two qualified questions that people can ask when they're doing um, client assessment to decide whether the clients actually got PMF? Yeah. So I think what you got to really do is just, just have them talk you through, okay, just talk to me about a client. Like what were, what was the problem they were having? Like right before they called, you know, right before they bought your product and you know, what did they pay? Like, and then what I would look for is like some of these, like, um, you know, you have one customer who pays like a million dollars and then another one is paying 20K. It's like, wait a second, what's your go-to-market like strategy? Like if it doesn't line up, if it's like a million dollar sale, but they have, you know, they have an inside sales team. It's like, what's going on here, right? Like this isn't going to work out you know, or like a team that's not on the road traveling, meeting people, right? Like, or they're not like partner influence driven or anything like that. I think you got to kind of look at their go-to-market a little bit and uh, look at some of the building blocks around that. Like what, what is their makeup of their team? Are they like, how do they acquire the customer? 
you know, a lot of the sort of sales led organizations can struggle more with the marketing side, right? They'll, they they do not have as much marketing execution. And then it's sort of the opposite when you go uh, sort of e-commerce or even PLG, you just have to really ask them like, what is the reason, what is the negative impact, the negative consequence that somebody's going to have right before they think about your product and have them just like explain that. And if it doesn't make sense to you, uh, and it's just like a kind of a lumpy G, go to market that, that those are, those are dangerous. Makes sense. And I wanted to drive a quick question. I think it's yeah. uh, one that was going to come up. I didn't want to raise it, but someone else did. What's your take on using platforms like Inframail, MailScale, um, you know, bare metal magic. Um, there's a lot propping up right I mean, now. These are great ideas. The, the downside to them is like, when they put them at that price point, right? Like when they put them at like a, you know, like a, they just stop working. And because what happens is it's like, well, obviously like, you know, unfortunately the world, the way the world works is you got to pay to play, right? Like, so if you're out there and you're using one of these, like, okay, I'm going to go get every host gator DNS DKIM setup. And I'm going to go spit up $1 inboxes everywhere. Eventually it's just going to shut off, right? Like you're not going to have that deliverability. And that's like, everybody knows those systems and where they're, they're doing it. Now there are some people that are doing some pretty crazy stuff with their own private. Now, a lot of them aren't going to talk about it because they've already built and established a relationship with the ISP, the ESP and the ESP is comfortable with their, their sort of footprint, right? Like it's really all comes down to the footprint. Like, and what I think what you're talking about is sort of like, what about these private networks? Well, I don't like them if they're $249 and anybody in the world can go get on them. They, they should be in the five to six figure range because that's the kind of, you know, it's like, why did you get that? How did you get that thing so cheap? Well, there's something Understood. wrong. That's the problem. Understood. <laughs> and if they're not a little secretive of it, like hopefully they're not just like telling everybody what their hosting provider is. Cause like now that hosting provider is like exposed and they're going to be like, no way, get off this. Why would you ever want to take this, this group of people on this platform? Right. Understood. So Understood. Understood. that's something you got to think about in the future. Makes sense. Um, for, for everyone asking, just, just as a quick note, this session will be recorded. I feel like that is the most asked question yes, right now. In the chat. Um, this yes, session is that. being recorded. It's people. It's a lot more popular than any other question. You have Jesse over here, everyone. You have important questions to ask. Do not worry. It's being recorded. It's free. We're not going to get anything. You'll get access to this. Hey, well, no, um, I'm so, <laughs> um, uh, Jesse, now let's go into a bit of the, the technical pieces. Um, maybe a bit uh, uh, off screen. Yes, you definitely get a coffee break. Uh, Jimmy, we'll, we'll be calling it a break in about five to 10 minutes to take a quick coffee. And then we'll go into Eric's session, which is going to be just as epic. Awesome. Um, uh, so Jesse, I have a question for you over here with respect to your take on Spintax. Do you think the notion that Google is doing uh, NLP segmentation and matching is actually a verified point? Or do you think that's just hoopla that people are putting in for the sake of putting it in? Uh, if I have to, if you have to force me one way, I, I actually think it's, it's a little bit of hoopla. Okay. <laughs> I, haven't seen, I have not seen much difference. Uh, we've tried it. I mean, I, I can, I've can. i looked, trust me, I, I've got a lot of data on this and I can't find it. Now, I'm not saying, like, I actually think probably you should do it, right? However, I got to imagine with like, like I look at that and, you know, if I, you know, I have a close family that works at Google if you look around, but, uh, you know, and I look and these are like the kids, these, guys, these people know like AI and, you know, open AI, like these company, Microsoft, like look, Look at these companies, they have brilliant engineers. Like, what do you think? You don't think they're gonna, I just look at it, I'm like, come on, man. But look, hey, if you wanna add it in, I'm sure it can help, right? Like, I don't think the, I, look, I do think there is a problem with the exact same copy, but it's all a machine learning model. And once you just cross it, you just don't know what that behavioral threshold is. And I think that's really what you have to start to think about is like, what behaviors am I demonstrating? Like, am I burst, like, you know, if you look at sales offs, I think they changed it recently, but if you look at sales offs website, it still says send 250 uh, emails per, or did like a couple weeks ago, 250 emails per rep per day. It's like, if you burst out 250 emails out of one person's inbox and the rest of the company is sending nothing, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to block, they're going to block that inbox. You're going to be shadow banned and then they're going to just suspend you after enough people complain or even find it in the spam folder. Like that's, it's, it's the behaviors and it's also like a lot of education. And I think there's gotta be some more leadership in the sales engagement platform space. I think a lot of them are really struggling right now. And I'm glad you, you know, I wanted to take this opportunity to like 
you know, you've really like shown your leadership about delivery. Like you don't want spammers on your platform. I know you like, that's not what you want. And I just think there's just a lack of sort of like leadership on some of the other, <laughs> they just got to come out and say, don't send unsolicited emails from your primary domain name over 50 a day, right? Like I know that's going to scare IT and they're going to be scared, but you can't really do it. Maybe a hundred a day per domain, unless you have huge volume. So I think you got to really, really take this serious. Don't use your primary domain as a testing ground either. That's another one that's like, how do you not know that by now? Like what is wrong? What no, memo did noted. you miss? Noted, noted. Um, I'm going to drop into final two questions. Uh just to make sure we have some time uh, to, to be to be kind to, to Rajesh who's actually asked this question a few times. Uh, what's your take on Zoho? Jesse, where are we with this? Oh. Um, yeah, and I know we can go on forever, but <laughs> stay away. Get the quick deal stay, away. stay away. All right, there yeah, they, uh, they, they, I mean, they eliminated cold email. Actually, I'm just a little bitter about it because I uh, they didn't. Uh, yeah, I don't. Never mind. But they cool. they uh, they, uh, they they do have cold email. Like that is like they if you start warming up in Zoho right now, you are you'll find out what, what's going to happen, right? Like you'll, yeah, try it's, it. all I mean, good. I, no, I, it's all going to work. I, I just wanted to make it sure you, work. people heard it from your side. Um, we'll drop in the last question and then we'll take, uh, uh, you know, just a second point. So what's going to happen over here? Um, what's your take on reply rates a hundred percent in warmups? Why should people not do that? Or why should people do that? I think, you know, anything at a hundred percent is a little bit, a little bit interesting, right? Like, uh, you know, you could probably like you could probably make the argument though. I mean, like I think a little bit of it's like understanding what you're doing, right? Like, okay, you're just doing 100 percent warm up. I, I don't, I don't know. Is that is that normal for like you know? I think it's there's, not right. Yeah, it's not no, human it's behavior. Not. Yeah. However, there's probably people who are on like an enterprise version of AWS or Google or Microsoft in Europe, and they're doing 10,000 you know warm up emails on the side, and then they're sending 40. You know, there's probably people doing that, right? Like there, there's strategies that you could take. I, I think best thing to do is just try it. You know, the worst thing okay. you can is no, a couple of that's, lies. That's absolutely fair. That's Plain text though, fair. that's the that's the number one. That thing yep. is, uh, that is the number one. And most people are still not on plain text. And if you have an open rate on, you're not on plain text. So that's don't, it. So don't that's turn that. it on. If you have open rate on, you're not on. Plain text has been the biggest difference maker for us. Yep, I completely agree. So just before we do this, a, a quick note on the plain text, because uh, deliverability is a thing. Uh, Jesse mentioned this concept a long time ago, which is basically like a, a master slave, uh, a combination where you have a thousand leads, 900 leads you basically do in a plain text experience with open rates and 100 leads with open rates on. That way you can actually gauge what your lead quality is like if you really care about it and then use that to measure your you know your master campaign so eric's the only one who gave me a compelling argument on this one because he he said he flexes the fact that he gets like a high open rate but i'd rather just get the replies yeah no, that's absolutely <laughs> fair we'll, we'll we'll take on eric on the next session but then jesse ask him that question please somebody i definitely will i definitely will uh, everyone before you chat the next session is in exactly nine minutes um uh, Mishti or Swapnil, can you please drop in the link over here? I you already obviously have, uh, yeah. yeah, you already have the invite for that, so you should be there in that one. Please make sure you show don't up. Miss Eric, uh, yeah, you don't miss Eric. Um, he he's been ramping on a lot of stuff about uh the way he wants to handle things, and given the way the world's moving with AI, you want to be involved in that. So, with that being said, Jesse, if people want to get in touch with you, how do we do that? And uh, some part yeah, of just DM me on LinkedIn. Like, just uh, let's. You know, if I could help you there, there's a lot of my contents on there. Uh, probably a lot of you heard of it there. So just go uh, LinkedIn or if, uh, you know, you, you find out some of the private groups that I run, you could talk to people that are possibly in them, maybe get an invite, but, uh, you know. Everything. Just I'll do that very quickly, everyone. It's called Sass Yacht Club. Um, okay. It's invite only. Try to find it. It, it. Game changer. Hard to find. It the game. It's hard to find. Yeah, me. I'll, I'll by, we'll by figure reason. it out. Easy peasy. All right. If you know, you know. Everyone, thank you so much for your time. Jesse, thank you so much for your time. Jesse, everyone from leadmagic.io, check out his website, check out what he does. A cold emailing expert on LinkedIn, follows all his content with respect to deliverability. He's the one who broke the Google news. He's the one who broke the Zoho news. He knows his stuff, follow his shit. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Jesse, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you. Everyone, we'll see you in eight minutes. Have your coffee, have yeah, your toilet break. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. Let's go back to the primary. Thanks. That's it. Cheers. <laughs>